Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue, and I've made a case fan. Yes, I've made a PC case fan similar to the one in the ZBrush 4R8 video because I wanted to see if I could do it in Modo using Mesh Fusion and Mesh Operations. So I used Mesh Operations as everywhere I could for the component objects that I cut and chopped and added together using Mesh Fusion uh, for this case fan. So this case fan is actually, let me just turn on wireframes really quickly. Um, two mesh fusion items we've got the fan itself and the blades and then we've got the uh sort of the chassis for the fan and these are made out of component parts where i've used mesh operations pretty much wherever i could and that gives me some flexibility so i can do things like change the number of fan blades here i've got some channels rigged up um some jerk face producer comes along and says greg can you change the number of fan blades from seven to three i can do that really easily using mesh operations instead of having to remodel the thing from scratch. Or if he says, I need a super fan with 12 blades, I can do that at 12 blades, although that's way too many. I can't even possibly be efficient. Um, you know, do things like change the radius of the uh, sort of screw sleeves there, I can do that. Let's see, I've got that rigged up somewhere. If I want to double it, boom, looks terrible, but I can do it. <laughs> that's the important thing. Let me go ahead and set that back. I could do things like change the bend of the blades, if I can bend, if I want to bend them a lot, like that, or change the uh, twist on the blades, if I want to twist them a lot, or more, like that, or maybe uh, some crazy amount, like 360. There you go. It's kind of a, again, not a very good fan, but we can do that if we want to. Not sure what that was initially. Anyway, these are things you can do. Um, for the shape in the back, of course, can be changed. Let me just change the uh, spiral radius of that guy. Where is that back cut spiral? Boom, we got the spiral radius changed. I can change the uh, depth of these side cuts here if I want to. Let's see, edge cut radius, we'll say negative uh, 0.1 if I want them less deep like that. In this case, less deep means way too less deep. Let me put those back. There we go. Now the question is, is it fast? Well, it depends. It's faster than doing this Traditionally, like in Moto, normally without using mesh operations, you'd have to remodel all these things if you had to do a sort of a change like that. Um, so it's obviously way faster than that, and it's fast enough to work with, but it doesn't appear to be anywhere near as fast as ZBrush. So that's something that they really need to improve on in Moto to make this more of a practical way of modeling. You do have some nice things like adjusting strip width. So this is something that Mesh Fusion allows you to do is adjust uh, the strip width where basically the fillets of the edges here, so I can sort of drag and adjust these guys really quickly. And, and that happens really fast. And it's really um, one of the nicer things about using Mesh Fusion. In fact, I don't think you can do this even on ZBrush. I can grab this guy, and I think I can grab all the uh, sibling strips and just close my little tab there. So I can you know adjust all these at once. It, it's a nice way of modeling. And again, um, this actually operates pretty quickly, but you know, speed-wise, it's okay. Could be better, but actually creating it is super simple. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to sort of break down the different uh, components that went into this. So if I actually, so let me select one of the mesh fusion items and show the, show the component parts here. So let me turn on wireframes. So these are all the parts that went into making it, right? The pink ones are subtractive and the green ones like the chassis here or the fan blades here are additive. So once we create those, it's super easy to piece this thing together. And of course, then we also have the ability to make changes. So it's a nice uh, best of all worlds minus speed. Speed could definitely be better. But so I'm just going to walk through, I think, creating these components using um, mesh operations. And then I'll show you how to very easily uh, add them and subtract them all together into the case fan shape. Sounds good? All right, let's go. All right, so here's all the component parts that go into making the uh, case fan. So all of these guys are mesh fusioned together to create two different mesh fusion items. One is just the, the case, and secondly, the fan right there is just two items that are gonna be fused together. But you notice these little gears here and the little pluses, that means all of these items are made out of mesh operations. You can kind of see them here if you twirl down. These are all mesh operations, boom, boom, boom. And in fact, if I you know select something like uh, 
the screw sleeves here, then go over to my mesh ops list, you'll see all the mesh operations there for the screw sleeves, right? And so I don't want to go in and take a super long time modeling these because I know all you guys have the, uh, uh, you know, attention spans of fourth graders like me, maybe a third grader. So I will, I think I'm just going to speed model through these and talk a little bit about mesh operations. There's a few idiosyncrasies with working with them still. Uh, they're early, right? They just came in Moto 10 using Moto 11 here. But uh, again, like I think I'll just speed model through this. And then once we start doing the actual mesh fusioning, doing making the mesh fusion items, it's super fast. You can uh, just quickly click together a mesh fusion item in just a minute or two. So, all right, in a new scene, let's see if I could speed model this bad boy in a few minutes. I don't know, probably not. Call this first guy fan case. And this is just the main chassis we're gonna create here. And that's just a cube mesh op, so cube. Right there, so cube mesh op. I like to resize from center. So squish it in on Z a little bit, give this guy some segments. One thing to keep in mind is uh, Mesh Fusion likes subdivision surfaces. It doesn't just like subdivision surfaces, it only really works with Catmo Clark subdivision surfaces. And it's smart enough to convert poly surfaces into subds before doing a union or subtra a subtraction. But you'll typically want to work with your primitives in sub D mode instead of polygon mode so you know what they look like, right? So if, if this was a subdivision surface, it would be slightly more rounded around the edges and have a, I need a, a good idea of what it's going to look like. Unfortunately, cube is the only primitive that doesn't allow us to pick a polygon type. So if I were to add, say, you know, whatever, a cylinder, you'll notice there's this polygon type here, face sub D, it's Kevin Clark sub D. Um, cube doesn't have that. And it's not because the person who made cube is a bad person. It's just that the person who made cube forgot to put it in there. So that's been bugged. It should show up in the next version of Moto. But for now, it's not there, but it's okay. Uh, sub, uh, Mesh Fusion is smart enough to convert it, but we will want to put a little bit of a bevel on the edges here. We'll do that with the radius. And I'm going to use press C and use the channel hole tool. Again, you'll see what I did. I'm in component mode. If I press C in, in component mode, I get edge slice, right? That just popped up. And so you need to be in item mode. And this is one of the sort of niggling issues I have with uh, mesh, uh, mesh operation modeling is you're really adjusting properties in item mode mostly. And so you're going to be using channel hall a lot to do things like just drag on radius because dragging on this tiny little slider here is suck world, right? My Wacom pen just goes off my tablet. So I want to use um, uh, channel hall by pressing C. However, you'll notice that uh, I can press channel hall again, C to drop the channel hall tool. So I press it again, and you'll notice my tool handles come back. So tool handles on the mesh operation and channel hall cannot be active at the same time. So if you sometimes have channel hall active, but no uh, channels selected, you may not realize it's active, even though it says channel hall here and no channel selected, it's, it's easy to forget that it's active. And you're just like, where the hell are my tool handles? So just keep that in mind. If you can't see your tool handles, press C. Also, um, ghosting comes into play here too, which I'll show in a second. But anyway, this is pretty good for our case fan uh, chassis base. This is what we'll be chopping into and adding to. And again, because it is a procedural item, we can always make it wider later or adjust the, uh, the radius on the edge or whatever we wanna do. That's kind of the whole point, right? Okay, double tap escape to drop um, the selection here. And I'm gonna go over and add another guy. We'll call this Oh, I don't know, fan edge ring cuts. This will be the cuts in the um, fan case here. So we look at this guy. Let me just turn off, uh, make it active and visible there. Um, so this is gonna be cutting into the edges, right? So we need to make a cylinder. So I've got um, add operation cylinder and we're gonna do Z and we are gonna do Catmull Clark. I do not need uh, caps on this one. You'll see in a second why sides. Let's see, let's do 16 and eight. So again, it's a subdivision service, so you can get uh, by with fewer segments here. I'm gonna do uh, 0.5 and hit Control, Alt, Enter. Do you make everything 0.5? Um, and then hit Control. I like to resize from center, which would default to that, and just kind of stretch it out. Again, I'm going fast here because, you know, attention span, right? So play this back in slow motion later if this is too fast for you. All right, so we wanted a little bit thinner there. Looks pretty good, I like it. Now I'm gonna add a thicken mesh op. Thicken right there and just pull this in a little bit. Whoops, thicken, thicken. We offsetting here, thicken like that, right. So I'm cutting in like 
this. So this is going to cut in to my edges. And I'll be able to adjust this thicken offset later to adjust the depth of my cut. Now, a couple things. Uh, mesh operations do not have a loop slice mesh op yet. So I can't slice these uh, rings here. And the thicken mesh op does not have segments. So I can't have like six segments here. The reason I'm bringing this up is because this is a subdivision surface, it's a little bit poofy on the edges. And we just, again, mesh ops are new. We need some new mesh ops. One, I want segments for thicken, if you're listening, foundry. And uh, of course, we'll need a loop, uh, loop slice mesh op at some point. But right now, this is fine. Or edge weighting. An edge weighting mesh op would work as well once mesh fusion works with edge weights. But we don't have any of those three things. So we're going to be a little bit rounded on our edges here, but that's that's fine for now. Okay, so moving along, let's do, let's see, let's do the uh, fan face circle cut for the main um, circle cutter for the main cut in the face here. And again, doing a cylinder. We'll be doing lots of cylinders, if you can imagine. So 0.5 all the way, Catmull Clark, boom. And I do want this one to be uh, have be capped because, in general, Boolean operations like enclosed services, and of course, Camel Clarks like uh, quads better than uh, ingons. Okay, so here's this guy, and I'm not going to move. Okay, here's another little hint. Like uh, Mesh Fusion likes the centers of the items to be in the center, and, and typically in the modeling work at, uh, work uh, layout workspace, um, centers are hidden. So a center is essentially, um, think of it as think of it as the, the pivot point, and the pivot point is the pivot offset. <laughs> I wish they had named these differently. Center is the center of the mesh, as, as you can imagine. And if we're viewing the center, so we'll just uh, look at centers. Where is this? Visibility. Show centers uh, selected. So there we go. And and so you can see the center of the mesh here is, is right. You know, it's kind of hard to see. It's that dot right there. But if I move the if I move this cylinder over like this, the center of the mesh is no longer in the center of the cylinder. So I don't want to to offset the creation of the cylinder. I don't want to offset the cylinder mesh op, you know, the creation parameters off a of Z like this. I want to keep it at zero so the center is still centered. And just um, just in you know a regular item move tool, move it this way. So our center is still centered, but this is going to be, you know chopping in to this uh, face like this, right? And it's a little big, so let's uh, channel haul our cylinder down a little bit. Boom, something like that. And of course, we can change that later, which we will probably do. Double tap escape, and let's do another guy. Uh, whoops, just press in for a new empty mesh item. Return to rename it. And let's call, let's do these screw holes. Good name for a... Uh, for a mesh item, call it fan screw holes. A little less dirty, or maybe not, I don't know. Fan screw holes, and this one will be, so we wanna drill holes into the corners of this fan. And so again, we're going to do a cylinder, of course, because it's our favorite primitive for this project. Z, let's try a 0.02 or so. So there's kind of small, in fact, I'll do this here. And resize from center. And this needs to chop all the way through our case fan, so make it kind of big. And looking at it uh, from the front here, maybe a little bit bigger for the screw hole, maybe like that or so. Again, we can change these later. And then I'm going to position it. And another thing to keep in mind is snapping does not work with procedural tool handles yet. So mesh operation tool handles cannot snap to the viewport. At some point, hopefully we'll have a snapping uh, mesh op uh, sort of sub tool we can add to the tool pipe here, but right now we don't, so we can just eyeball it. And again, we could change this later, so I think that's good. Now I'm going to do a couple things. Um, you may be thinking to duplicate this that the best tool to use is the array mesh op, in which case we would do like a two by two array, two by two by one array, like so. And then you're thinking to yourself, okay, that's great, I've got an array, but where are the tool handles? So the tool handles are actually on the array generator, which is sort of the subtool in the tool pipe. Again, I think this is an idiosyncrasy of how mesh operations work. 
think all tool handles should be available if you sort of if you have the I guess called the mother mesh op or the parent mesh op selected or the main mesh op. I should get all tool handles there, but I don't. I've got to select array. Secondly, I don't really want to do this because now I've got to do a little bit of math in my head to like I can't just eyeball these. I gotta like go in and say, okay, this guy was, you know, moved the cylinder, was moved over, you know, this much and this much. I've got to double it over here to get the right distances in array. There's an easier way to do this uh, without using an array. So if I delete array, I can just use the mirror mesh op and now I'm mirroring on X. And what's cool is you can just layer these up. So I can again, I can add another mirror and mirror on Y like that. So got screw holes. Um, now I need screw hole sleeves. So I'm going to just duplicate, control D duplicate my fan screw holes. And it duplicates those mesh operations right there with it. We'll call this fan screw hole sleeves. Also kind of dirty sounding. Okay, so this is uh, going to be a slightly modified version of the screw holes. So let's go to the cylinder. We need to make this a little bit bigger. So in radius XY, I'm just gonna make that a little bit bigger there. Channel haul that up. Press C, drop my channel haul. Honestly, it doesn't need this many size segments or size. Let's do like, six and 16 same with the screw hole to be honest screw hole let's grab uh, the cylinder and do 16 and six that's plenty it should speed us up a little bit so the fan screw holes here we do not actually want um to be capping the polygon so i'm going to turn off capping boom boom oh actually in the screw holes i didn't make that sub d did i Change that really quick. Oops, cylinder. Let's uh, make this Catmull Clark. Very good. Okay, and then we will do quad grids for the screw holes. And then you can always split. I'm going back and forth the item list a lot because I like my mesh operations window big, but you can split it and, and just do it from here. So I can go over here to uh, screw hole sleeves and maximize this guy again. So this cylinder, I'm going to insert a thicken mesh operation, just kind of like we did for that ring, and uh, sort of squish that in a little bit, right, like that. And our cylinder, again, I want um, subdivision services. So there we've got that. You'll see I have the blue here. That is ghosting. So I turn ghosting off. You see the final result. Turn ghosting on. You see everything above, every subsequent mesh operation. Again, these mesh operations are like the shader tree. They go from the bottom up. So cylinder is evaluated first, then thicken, then mirror, then mirror. So with ghost on, obviously thicken and the mirrors are shown in this blue ghosting mode. And I have tool handles. But if I turn ghosting off, I see the final result, but no tool handles. Actually, again, I think this is a bit of a the wrong way to do the workflow. I think I should have tool handles regardless of whether I have ghosting on. Um, so I can see the final result because the blue is okay, but it's not great. But anyway, that's that's uh, that's just me complaining. Squish it in a little bit, resize from center, looks good. So squish these guys in. They don't need to be much broader than that uh, cube right here, just a little bit. So something like that. And then if I uh, go up here to the mirrors, it looks good, but it's a little poofy here. So again, we don't have a loop slice mesh op, and we don't have an edge weighting mesh op, and we don't have segments for bevel. So how do we tighten that up? So we can actually, in this case, use a slice mesh operation. So after thicken, I'm gonna add slice and just a regular old slice right here. And actually I'm gonna hide, we just uh, hide everything else. Inactive meshes, hide. I really need to map that to a pie menu without having to go in there. Okay, so there's our slicey slice bar and I'm just gonna hover over it till it's yellow and drag it and you can see it tightening up here. You see it uh, sort of tightening up the edge there like it's a sub D mesh, adding a loop there. And then what's cool is we do have a symmetry mesh op as well. So in tool pipe, add tool pipe tool symmetry and make it on Z and you'll see that pop in there. So again, if you watch, let me turn symmetry on and off. Poofy, not poofy. All right, looking good. So there's our fan screw hole sleeves. Almost done. We just need a couple things. One, we need to be able to cut the, let me just show these guys again. We need to be able to cut that sort of cool vortexy looking thing into the back and then of course we need the fan itself so i think the first thing i'm going to do is make the fan itself let me add a couple locators press l to add a locator i'm just going to clean up my scene real quick so let's parent these guys to this locator we'll call this um fan case loc 
big, I'm a big fan, ha, of uh, organizing my scene. We'll call this Fan Master Loke. I know, you should stop watching right now after that joke. It's terrible. And I'll do one more. We'll just um, parent uh, this guy in between here. Just actually dick, dick, dick. And we'll call this uh, Fan Blades. Woke. Because that may rotate, right? Fan Blades got to rotate. Press in for a new mesh. Parent that to Fan Blades here. And I'm going to hide this group here. And for Fan Blades, actually, I'm going to keep it on. I'll just keep a wireframe so I get the scale right. Going to do a, another mesh op. We'll do an ellipsoid because it looks like an egg, which is kind of sweet. So here's our ellipsoid. Resize from center, sweetness. Okay, boom, something like that. I think there's a bulge. Adjust the adjust the bulge of the ellipsoid. Ah, sorry, childish. I know. Um, let's see. Go back to. Uh, can I get my tool handles back and hold control? I should be able to adjust this. Yeah, there we go. Something like so for the fan shaft. Right. Adjusting the bulge on the fan shaft. Okay, looking looking decent. Let me just uh, squish it in a bit. So there's our. It's kind of big. It's kind of a big fan shaft. Fan shaft is too big. I'm projecting. Okay, a little bit smaller there. Boom. All right, looks good. That's all we need for the fan shaft. Make sure it is in Sedvision or Camel Clark. Looks good. Now we need some fan blades. Also rename this guy Fan Shaft. All right, moving on to the Fan Blades. Whoops, let me just uh, parent that dude there. Fan Blades. This would be, let me hide those. Go to the front. Let's do a cube mesh op. All right, whoops, resize from center as usual. Should be default, I think. Resize from center. Skinny that guy up. Let me zoom in here a little bit. Go to the front, move them up to the top, like so. And probably maybe like that. Again, a little bit skinnier, like so. Put some segments in here, maybe eight, eight, four, or maybe 12 on Y, like so. Four might be too much there, but something like this, a little bit skinny. And then I'm going to do a rotation mesh operation. So a rotation effector basically um, just allows you to do a procedural rotation on here, right? So select Y, channel hall, look at the top. We're just doing a bit of a rotation. Those are canted at the an angle a bit like that. And then we're going to do a vortex mesh op. Vortex. Dumbest name, but super useful. So vortex mesh op. Here I'm selecting the effector. That's where the controls are. And think of it as twist, taper, spiral. Spiral and twist are different. I'll get to that in a bit, but we're going to be doing taper. So we're going to taper this guy a little bit. I think they're sort of fatter at the top, like like so. And then twist it a bit, like, like so. Maybe like that. A little bit of a twist and a taper. I think that's still too fat. So go to my cube and uh, skinny it up. Let's make this 3 and Z. It's a little too many. I could turn off ghosting to see the final result here, but I lose my tool handles, so that's unfortunate. Eh, I think that's good for now. I'll probably have to adjust that some more later. I do want to put a bend in there at the top. Bend effector, and again, let's turn on locator so you can see the bend. So this is the uh, vortex locator. Actually, let's look at the locators here. So these guys, rotation effector, bend effector, and vortex effector. These are locators in the scene with the controls on them for those particular deformers. I'm gonna group them, put them in their own group, and we'll just call this effectors group. Okay, that way I can easily hide them. I could also just control one, toggle locators on and off to hide them that way. Need to get my bend effector scaled down a bit. So length and radius, press C for channel hall. Get that down to there. Whoops, get that down to there. And then I'm going to bend it. And so the, the annoying thing about bend is I don't know which way it's going to bend. There's no indication on the gizmo itself that tells me if it's going to bend front to back or left to right. So if I bend to this guy, that's obviously wrong. It would be nice, foundry, if there was some sort of like visual indication there. It's easy to fix. Just rotate it by 90 on, on Y and then bend it, you know, something like that. Um, I think this needs to be, you know, I don't think that's quite what I want. Let me just use the cube, go back in here and uh, turn on ghosting so I get my 
handles. I want a little, a little more like that, I think. Let me look at the front. I'm gonna split my mesh ops viewport here and turn these guys back on, make them wireframe. So I want it to be, this circle right here is the circular fan cut. So I want it to be kind of taking up that space like that. That's looking a little better. Uh, yeah, I think something like that. Let me expand this again. And then I think, let me actually, I can hide these guys. And then I'll do our radial array so we can duplicate those. So radial array, radial, radial, radial array. Sounds good. And I want this on Z, of course. And then I don't think we need that many blades. Probably, I think seven is what I had. So that's what it's looking right now. So I can, like these fan blades, I think I'd want to adjust them a little bit. This is good for now. I'm just not going to spend a whole bunch of time adjusting them. Um, in terms of the, the bend and the uh, twist and everything else, because we can always do that later. But right now I think that's good. Now there's one thing we have to keep in mind because this guy is gonna spin, right? So if I go over here to the item list and I have fan blades selected and I go and I transform it, just a regular transform, like a rotation transform. You can see the gizmo here. If I do this, it's all kind of going to hell, right? And if, say, if I move it, it's all going to hell. So why? You might ask, is it doing that? That's a really good question because it's something we have to um, address. Back here at mesh operations, you'll notice that all of these mesh operations have something called use world transform and it's checked. And so essentially what's going on here is the mesh operation is ignoring the item transform. And it's doing that because it helps the mesh operation evaluate faster. And a lot of times when you're modeling, you're not transforming the item all over the scene. In fact, when you start animating, you may end up uh, just freezing this guy into one mesh and animating it that way. Um, and which is what we probably do for this case fan. After we do a mesh fusion, we're going to freeze it and, and animate it that way. So it's not something we really have to worry about. But I just want to, this is a good opportunity to bring this up and, and explain why this is happening. So use world transform is on to make mesh operations evaluate more quickly. But if I am going to transform this mesh, and, you know, if I'm going to end up transforming it, then I need to check those off. So I go to cube and I turn it off. And I go to rotation and I turn it off. Whoops, and I turn it off. And I go to vortex, voila, bend, and turn it off. And even a radial array especially, I'm gonna turn off under uh, the clone effector, use world transform. Now with those off, if I rotate it, it does not go to hell, looks great. If I transform it, it's great, okay? And actually the evaluation is plenty fast. It really doesn't affect the scene that much. Just something to keep in mind. So there's our case fan, K, or fan blades and uh, shaft assembly, looks good. Uh, I'm gonna hide these guys. Okay, turn these guys back on. I just need the vortexy shape in the back, the cutter to create the cool sort of uh, vortex cut in the back of the case fan. And I'm actually gonna use standard moto modeling tools for part of this. I just think it's a little bit easier. Again, um, we'll just call this, sorry, uh, vor uh, fan vortex cutter. There we go. Um, we're still missing some mesh operations that would make this easier to do it all mesh op. Uh, item here, but yeah, I think it's fine. We're going to be using mesh ops for the actual vortexy shape, and we can adjust those later. So I don't really think we lose much by using a standard uh, moto cylinder here for the base mesh. So we'll go on Z, make sure it's centered. I think sides and segments are fine for now. Size looks pretty good. Hold control, you can sort of adjust the size. I think that's I think that's fine. Oh, maybe a little bigger. Maybe like that or something like that. And then uh, I'm actually gonna, we'll just hide these guys in the back here now. All right, so I'm gonna press Q and drop it. Now I'm stuck with this, right? I'm stuck with this shape. Um, but I'm going to go to symmetry and Z. Hold down Alt and click symmetry if you need to change from X, Y to Z. So symmetry Z and we're just gonna, you know, bevel inside a little bit here. So bevel in and looks good like that. You can always adjust the segments over here if you want more segments. And we're gonna use these segments to create this sort of um, you know, fan shape or this vortexy shape here. And I can just uh, quad grid this guy. So there's a couple ways to do this. I use a little script here from the Eteria collection. Let me just you know, delete that polygon. I think I have to have the edges selected for this uh, script to work. And go with the quad fill. Boom, that didn't work. Maybe it doesn't like symmetry. Turn off symmetry and just do one at a time. Does it like quad fill? Yes, it does. So yeah, I'm doing quad fill because you know we are gonna like uh, pure Catmull Clark uh, services for this. 
You don't have to do what I'm doing here with this Swiss Army knife script. You can use um, quad fill with the edges here, or fill quads, or you can, uh, honestly, you could just use spiky to make a triangle, a triangle pull there. It's totally fine, it'll work. So when you work with Booleans, you often work with sort of negative shapes. And what, what I mean by that is, you gotta kind of wrap your head around, you know, work, you know, thinking of um, the inverse of what you're modeling, I guess is what I'm trying to get at. So we're creating a stamp. And so, you know, this isn't the shape I'm gonna be using. I'm gonna be using the opposite shape here, but I wanna select, it's easier for me to select like this and then just invert my selection. So you'll see what I'm doing. I, mean, I know I'm babbling and I'm making sense, but this will make sense in two seconds. So there's essentially this, you know, vortex shape we're gonna be using. Maybe, maybe I'll just go like that, looks good. And then what I wanna do really is invert it like so. Let me just uh, go like this and get one less here, whoops. Wish Moto had a toggle option on selection. Anyway, so I want something like this and then I wanna bevel these guys out. And so before I do that though, let me just save this as a selection set. So assign selection set, we'll just call this uh, bevel set. So that's saved. And I wanna turn this shift tab to turn this into a sub D mesh. And I think I'm gonna to want to do a quick um, loop slice here. So we'll just loop slice this to tighten that up a little bit, tighten that edge up a little bit. And then I'm going to go into my mesh operations. Let me go ahead and reselect my selection I just had there. So I can go into uh, my polygon list, do, 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 selection set, select that guy right here. And then I'm going to add a bevel mesh op. So bevel, polygon bevel. And what's gonna happen here is polygon bevels smart enough to grab those polygons that had selection and create a select by index selection operation there. Pull these guys out, pull them out like so, like that. I'm gonna add some segments to this to tighten it up. So where's my segments? Right here, let's do quite a few to tighten that up. And so this is gonna stamp in the back, right? That's gonna stamp this shape. These guys are gonna be cut into the back of our fan. But we also want to do a quick uh, twist or a quick spiral on these too. So let's add one more mesh op, call it vortex, because vortex has the, vortex is the spiral taper twist mesh op, even though it's called vortex, that's so dumb. All right, let's change the uh, vortex gizmo there and sort of align it up if we can a little bit like so, move it there, looks good. And so let's talk about the difference between twist and spiral. So if I do twist and press C for channel ops uh, or channel hall, what twist is gonna do is it's going to twist verts, but it's gonna do a fall off along this length of the gizmo. So when I twist like this, you'll see vertices closer to the end here, uh, to the end to get more of the twist and then that twist falls off the farther we go down. So these are twisting more than these, therefore we get this sort of cut in offset. And that's not what we want. We want to do a spiral, which does a fall off, instead of along the length of the gizmo, it does it from the radius from inside out. So if I increase spiral, you get that. So the guys on the edge get more rotation than the guys in the middle. And this is what we want, right? So there's a spiral we're gonna use this to cut into the back of our shape there. And again, the reason I did that, um, the reason I modeled the cylinder first, instead of using a, a mesh op cylinder, I could have used a mesh op cylinder, but the problem is this, this select by index, um, selection index here right here, you see all these ind indices, 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 indices right here. If I went in and changed, let's say the radius of my, or the number of um, segments on my procedural cylinder, it would have changed these selection indices and it would have screwed up my bevel. And so it doesn't really benefit me to create a, a cylinder uh, procedurally and use a manual selection. Because if I adjust the cylinder, it's gonna change those manual selection indices later on. So there's gotta be a better way to do a procedural selection for complex shapes 
like this sort of cross we had here uh, going forward so we don't have to create manual cylinders. Anyway, that's that whole thing. So I think we have all our shapes now and then all we have to do is hack these sons of bitches together and we will get, uh, why am I not seeing everything? Whoops, like that. And uh, then we will do our mesh fusion guy now, right? Right, right. Okay, actually this guy, oh, I made him the wrong way. <laughs> Never fear, we'll just uh, rotate him around like so, whoops, like so, and move him this way, and fortunately, we'll chop him in like this. Fortunately, uh, Mesh Fusion respects item transforms, so it's okay that I made him the wrong way. Boom. All right, let's uh, fuse this bad boy together. What do you say? Yum, yum.